Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an episode of Can't Cook, Won't Cook, where um, I do my best to uh, imitate Alan Murchison and show you a few of my favourite recipes. So today we're doing the salted caramel slices, as you can see here, raw food, perfect um, for an evening treat when you're in hard training, um, you want something sweet, you want something nice, but you don't want to eat something crap that will ruin all the hard work you've done in training. So. I'm going to show you how to make these, uh, all made with completely natural ingredients, taste amazing, way better than a normal caramel slice. So, now making the base for the uh, caramel slices, so cashew nuts go in. Uh, what you'll find about me is, I don't really weigh anything. So I just do it all by playing it by ear. So it's supposed to be about 130 grams of cashew nuts. I have no idea. Like it just looks about right. Same with uh, the coconut. That was supposed to be 90 grams. It will probably be about right. Um, so I'll just give this a little bit of a mix. I always find it's definitely better to um, mix the uh, the dry stuff like that first before putting the dates in, because otherwise it goes too sticky and you can't you don't get the right texture. So quickly. That was all it needs. Then we put the dates in. And uh, just got some coconut oil, which is melting over here, which should be ready now. Yeah, that's ready as well. So in goes this coconut oil. There's about a tablespoon of coconut oil there. Um, Quickly put the lid back on. Probably give about 10 minutes. Perfect. That's the kind of consistency you want. So you can like squidge it down on the bottom and uh, it goes. Um, like not really firm, but firm enough that you can put a caramel base on top and it won't fall through. And this is about the size of the um, pot or the uh, well, what I'm going to use to put it on. Bit of tin, bit of um, cling film on the bottom, so when it's done, you can just like pop it up, and uh, it's way easier to take out, and then you can cut it up into nice slices. So now I just need to like cover it. And then you just push it down. This also would make a really good base for them energy balls as well. It's pretty similar to how I make them. You know, if you wanted to, you could literally roll it up like that, and, it, and that's that's how simple it can be to make energy balls. Although I think it's nice to put some more flavours in it. And there you go. It's about how deep it is. So probably about. Just over a centimetre, maybe a centimetre and a half. It's like perfect amount, really. Right, so I'm now making the caramel sauce. Um, and this is dates that have been soaked in some hot water. So it just like makes them a lot softer. So when you blend them up, it will give a much smoother texture. So in go the dates and hot water. There's probably only about 150 mils in there with the dates. And I need 250, so I'm gonna add a little bit more in. Um, I've got maple syrup as well. So 100 grams of maple syrup, just a rough guess. I reckon probably about that. And then we've got the coconut oil. So again, 100 grams of coconut oil in there. I've just left this on the hob to, uh, to get hot. So it's um, smooth. And then a little bit more hot water I need in there. Not much, just um, probably a couple of tablespoons worth. So that will probably just about do. Um, and then the salt goes in. Just want to quickly check, make sure I don't cock it up. One tablespoon or teaspoon, sorry. But salt tastes nice because. I think if you put, do put a little bit in, it's just salt. It's just salt and caramel at the end of the day. Um, but I mean, you can always do a little bit, uh, blend it up, 
try it, see what it's like, and uh, add, add more in if you think it needs it. So I'll just give this one a go. That's it. So I've just given Ben the caramel and he's now going to give it his uh, seal of approval or try it and see what he thinks. What do you think, Ben, for a raw food caramel? That's good. Does it taste like caramel? Because people, people won't believe me when I'm saying that you can actually make caramel sauce out of natural stuff. That is weird because I'm not a healthy person, but that is really good. <laughs> there we go. It's got, it's got his seal of approval. <laughs> All right, so just putting the caramel sauce in. This is going to be the middle, uh, and then we'll have a dark chocolate base on top. So just like a decent amount, but not too much, otherwise it will just like keep falling out when you try and eat it. So I think that'll be a pretty decent amount. That's probably about four or five mils over the top. So I've just um, poured the rest of the caramel base into a Tupperware box, which you can save. You could use this for a topping on an ice cream if you wanted to, or I think what it would taste really nice in as well is if you used it as, a, as part of a smoothie. So if you had some of this, say like an avocado, a banana in there as well, and a bit of milk or you know oat milk or something like that, I think it would taste amazing. And that would be a pretty healthy uh, smoothie to have as well. So you know you can use it for anything really, even on your syrup, you know on your breakfast. You know if you've got some Greek yogurt, some uh, blueberries, banana in there, and you just want something sweet to top it off, just pour that on. Tastes amazing. Um, so yeah, don't throw it away. You know, it's got a lot of different uses that you can use it for. So just making the uh, chocolate for the top. This is raw uh, chocolate, so really uh, good way of doing it as well. So 50 grams of coconut oil. Right, so I've put the coconut oil in here. That's just melting nicely. And then I've got the raw cocoa powder, which is about 25 grams. I'll add that in. Add some maple syrup to sweeten it up a little bit. And then the salt and uh, it tastes like salted dark chocolate and depending on how bitter or how sweet you want just depends on how much maple syrup you need to add in. But I like it so it's a little bit of sweetness but it's quite a nice dark taste. Alright so coconut oil is melted. In goes the raw cocoa powder. Just need to stir that round. Put it on low temperature. Add the maple syrup. I'm going to turn the temperature off now. Now it's um, heated up enough, I just need to keep mixing it. And add the salt to it. Cool, yeah, that's good. Alright, so uh, the uh, caramel uh, brownie is. Uh, been left to set, so I'm uh, just going to get it out. So this has been in the freezer for about a good hour and a half, two hours, something like that. I could ideally do with leaving it for a little bit longer, but that'll do for now. I'm just going to put the chocolate on over top. All right, so chocolate's all on. Just got to let it set now. I probably made this a bit thicker than what, what I should have, but oh well, it'll still taste good. So me and Ben have both tried this, and uh, I like a really dark, rich taste to it, but Ben would probably prefer a bit sweeter, so if he was doing it, he'd add more ma maple syrup in. But what I find is the dark chocolate goes really well against the uh, caramel in there, because the caramel's quite sweet, and. Uh, the base is quite sweet as well, so a nice dark chocolate on top uh, just complements it all really well. Um, but it's personal preference, you know, try it a couple of times and you can tinker with it a bit and see see how you find it. But as you've seen, it's all natural ingredients and it I wouldn't say it's good for you, but it's a lot better for you than a normal caramel shortbread thing what you can buy from the shop. So give it a go and let me know in the comments below what you think. So I'm now going to do the kale one. 
Um, a few weeks ago, I did uh, this on my uh, YouTube channel. It was in a day uh, of what I eat, the, uh, the food what I eat in a day. And uh, since then, quite a few people have messaged me and said, hey Joe, what's, uh, what's the recipe for that? How do you make it? And um, I, I don't really follow a recipe. Um, I did once upon a time, but I can't remember now what I did. So I thought, I'll just show you what, what I do and uh, you'll see how easy it is and you can uh, easily do it at home. So to start off with, cashew nuts, probably about 130 grams in there, maybe between 100 and 150. Uh, I'm going to make a decent amount so I can save it and I've got it ready for other days when I want to use it. So cashew nuts just go straight in. Nutritional yeast, not quite as much in weight uh, as the cashew nuts. There's probably about 70 grams in there. No, probably a bit more, maybe about 80 to 90 grams in there. Really high in B vitamins, uh, great for boosting iron levels. That goes in. Sunflower seeds, a little bit less as well, even more, again, sorry, so there's probably only about 60, 70 grams in there. They go in, and then you just season it. So, garlic and herb salt, put some of that in. Garlic, this is just plain garlic, so a bit stronger. I think you want a decent amount of that in there to give it some good flavour. Black pepper. So all standard stuff here, a little bit of that, and then I'm going to just put a bit of Himalayan pink salt in there, and then the lid goes on, and you literally blitz it for about 20 seconds, 20 seconds. that's 6 seconds, that's what it looks like. Um, you might want to try it when it's like this to see if you've seasoned it as, uh, as much as what you'd like. So always start with a little bit less than what you think you might need and if you need a bit more just add it, on, add it in, put it back in for another couple of seconds and uh, keep going until you find it tastes just about right. Alright so now once you've done the uh, mix you just get some olive oil, drizzle it on the kale and then make sure the kale is all covered in a a little bit of olive oil. This helps the mix uh, stick to it. So that looks like it's lightly covered in it. And just get the mix. Give it a little bit of a shake. I actually got this recipe when I was out in Australia. Um, at some, they were really into their raw food up there, and loads of the cafes were doing this kind of stuff. And um, they were actually doing it with a dehydrator. So they'd leave it overnight and uh, I think that helps the kale hold a lot more of this um, like vitamins and uh, stuff in it so it's a, it's a bit better for you but you can do it in the oven, I do it in the oven and just do it over a low temperature, it's better. you can do it on a high temperature but it tastes a lot better if you've got a bit more patience and you do it on low temperature. I'm doing it on 120 degrees so it'll take about 20 minutes um, but it tastes, it, it tastes really good if you can do it a little bit, if you can do it in a lower temperature. And then, once you've mixed it all in, just put it on the tray. Don't want to put too much on, really, because if there's if there's uh, too if it's too crowded on there, then um, then it won't um, cook as well. It won't go crispy because you want it to go crispy, but you don't want to cook it too quick um, because it can burn the bits on the outside. So that's about that's about the limit of what you could fit on there if you want it to go nice and crispy. that one done. That's the healthy one. <laughs> the actual healthy one. <laughs> so these are the kale chips, what we did earlier. And then you can see they're nice and crispy now. So I'll just, um... Give a good go, shall we? Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. That is perfect, that is. So, 120 degrees, probably left in there for 30 minutes. And uh, they taste amazing. Here you go, Ben, just try one of them. Let us know what you think. For a healthy snack, savoury snack. 
what does that get out of 10? Tell our viewers. <laughs> oh, that's a 10. <laughs> Do you really like that? Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, so there you go. Cow gets a 10. <laughs> guys that's a wrap as you can see men can cook <laughs> um, if you give any of these recipes a go let me know in the comment section below uh, what you thought of them and uh, if you uh, rate them or if you think they need some improvement um, and also if you like this video don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and you can always share the video with your friends if you thought it was worth it cheers guys and uh, see you see you next time